All right, Senor Russell, welcome to Teslanomics. Glad to finally have you on, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, been a fan of your work. If uh, you guys are watching, don't know his channel, Hyperchange TV. You do a lot of the same stuff I do, which is why I love it, because you look at data and you kind of more focus on the finance side usually, but there's always charts and graphs and you're doing the actual work um, and helping us understand these things. So I love that there's more folks you know, in, in the same vein. Um, so yeah, stoked to have you on. I've been a fan for a while. Uh, and you just kind of had a special day yesterday, it, it seems, right? Pretty unreal, yeah. So um, yeah, tell me what happened. How did you get on the earnings call? Then we can break into like, what were your takeaways from it? And just kind of how are you feeling and all that? So give me the breakdown here. H how did you end up on the earnings call? Totally. So um, a little backstory. Uh, I make videos on my channel about the Tesla earnings call, recapping them every quarter. And those are some of my most viewed videos. And a couple subscribers had brought up the like I joked about being on the conference call tons of times, sort of making fun of the analyst questions. And finally, somebody commented and was like, Gally, you should go on the call. And so uh, I submitted a proposal and got it together for this quarter and said, hey, email IR at Tesla if you want to see me on the call. Like, Let's give this a shot. Really, I even put in the video, I thought it had a 0% chance of working. And I was blown away. Uh, at the end of the day, over 200 people emailed, 85,000 shares, uh, tens of millions of dollars worth of Tesla stock, like vouching for me. Um, and then I tweeted it out, um, like sort of these numbers, and it was like, hey, Elon, like, can we make this happen? Uh, I wanna take input from the retail investors, get on the call. And then actually I went to the gym, got back from the gym. First thing I do is check my email from Tesla IR directly. And they're like, yeah, everybody wants to be on the call. Like we can't make it happen. And then I see a tweet from Elon that says, okay. And like, next thing I know, uh, I got on the call. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. You know, it, it, that in my working with them, that's kind of actually the, your, your best chance, you know, like I'm sure people reach out wanting all these things and it's like, Look, if you can get Elon's attention and he actually responds to you on Twitter, of course it's going to happen. But outside of that, your chances of them like approving you, unless you're CBS or somebody, chances are low. Chances are low. Yeah. So, so you're on the call, and what happens? Because this was kind of a special, special circumstance, right? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I've never heard anything like this. Um, I listen to Tesla and conference calls all the time. And basically what happened is Elon started getting fed up with the line of questioning from the analysts. Um, and that's sort of why I wanted to do the call because I feel like the questions are boring and not what long-term investors care about. And so um, next thing I know, Elon is like, all right, these questions are boring. Like, let's go to YouTube. And then that's the quote that everyone's talking about. And I kind of freaked out because I'm on the call, I'm ready. And then they <laughs> announced my name. And you know, luckily, um, I want to give a shout out to Rob at the Tesla podcast and Fred from Electrek, uh, and also Trent Eady because I had been, you know, hours and hours of phone calls with them, notes back and forth, getting emails from all the Tesla community, and so I just had a massive list of questions ready to go, and just started firing them off. Elon seemed to like it, um, and said, you know, these questions aren't boring. Let's keep it going. So I sort of just ran with it and tried to get everything that you know the Tesla community wanted. Uh, answered, asked on the call. Yeah, I, I actually just got done listening to it. And um, yeah, it, it was probably the most interesting earnings call I've ever heard because typically, yeah, you're right. The, the questions are very specific, short, kind of cited, uh, how an analyst can optimize their return on you know shorting or, or buying or whatever. And it's one of those things where I, th I feel like all the questions you asked were all things that I had been wondering about. So it was all very much like, I think the whole Tesla community, not, you know, short, you forget the analysts that have like their own view of the world, the actual Tesla community, re like greatly appreciates that. And it sounded like Elon, Elon enjoyed it. Now they, they were trying to cut you off at one point, but Elon cut them off, right? How did you feel at that moment? Cause it, I think the moderator came on and was like, okay, like next question. And Elon kind of stepped in and was like, no, 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 <laughs> we're going to keep going. How, what did you think like in that moment right then? Yeah, I mean, I just kind of wanted to not like lose momentum and just keep coming with questions. And like I got the sense that like Elon and the management team like seemed like this was a pro like a productive discussion and they enjoyed having it. And so I was like this like if it's if I get out of hand, like they'll cut me off or right. Elon, you know what I mean? Like, it's not like they're just going to keep letting me going. So yeah. if Elon 
thinks this is interesting and you know I think this is adding value and this is the questions that you know literally probably a lot of your viewers too emailed in to ask like let's just run with it and see yeah. how far we go. So of all the answers that he gave, including to the other analysts and stuff, what were your kind of main takeaways? Anything that stood out that he said that maybe was different or surprising or anything? The biggest thing that was surprising was how uh, strongly he worded that they don't need to raise capital this year. Because Elon in the past has said that we don't need to raise capital um, and then gone on to raise capital. And I think what he's just insinuating is that we don't need to raise money, but we, we want to grow faster, so we will. And right. so Adam Jonas, you know, I think is actually a very smart question to say, okay, Elon, like we know you said that in the past, but would you consider raising money to accelerate growth? And Elon, frankly, he almost got like pissed and was right. like, no, like we're definitely not raising. So now that puts the stakes, you know, fully in their court. They can't make a capital raise. Or I, I mean, going back on their word now would seem crazy. And so that's sort of my big takeaway is a big thing that I like to look at in these conference calls more than the numbers, more than the questions is the philosophy and the thoughts and the emotions of the CEOs, because he knows what's going to happen in six months. You know, he understands the business better than ever. And I just get this sense of confidence from him from that answer that most of the problems that Tesla has are worked out and he sees, sees a clear path towards profitability and that's why he's so confident. And so my biggest takeaway is sort of like, I have renewed confidence in the story because of his. Um, and there's some stuff with the numbers that backs that up too, but that was the biggest gist. Amazing, yeah, uh, that was, and yeah, I agree. I think Adam Jonas is is, is great. I, I really enjoy his, his, line, his line of questioning and every time I see him quoted, um, one of the better ones. For sure. And so what about any of the questions related to, um, you know, Model Y production or I thought it was kind of funny how there was some uh, there was a report I think a lot of us talked about for them starting Model Y production next year. And he just kind of flat out said no. Um, any of those things, you know, not necessarily around the financials of the company, but just around the production or, you know, charging or any of those. Any of those things stand out to you as like kind of shocking or, or, or surprising? Yes, yeah, so much news. I mean, the Model Y is interesting because Reuters, super legitimate source. You know, I made yeah. a video trying to like extrapolate what they were meaning by that. Um, so I think it was awesome to get clarity from Elon to know where their head's at saying, no, Model Y is in starting production for 24 months. And it's we don't even know where we're going to build it. So I don't know how Reuters knows. Yeah. So I thought that was awesome. Um, got a little more clarity. Oh, the biggest thing on the conference call that I feel like no one is talking about was when I asked him about Tesla energy um, and how that success of the South Australia project is sort of leading to an inflection point in these bigger utility projects. And he mentioned the next couple months they could potentially announce a project that's like a gigawatt hour, yeah. which is absurdly big, um, sort of sets an even new precedent for world's biggest battery. So I thought yep. that got swept under the rug and that was huge news. Um, also one more tidbit about the platooning of the semi truck and how that is really going to enable them to be cost competitive with rail. Like, I just think Tesla, you know, they don't need to do any marketing for the semi truck. It's going to sell itself. if It is that efficient. And I don't know. I'm so I'm really stoked on that product line after learning that. Yeah. I, I, I one of the thoughts I had immediately after listening to it was like, you actually got Elon to laugh, which is pretty cool because you mentioned the Daimler CEO talking about physics which, oh, you know, yeah. which got him going. And, and that was related to whether or not the trucks could actually achieve that range with the battery technology. And then I'm glad JB chimed in because JB really is like the battery EV guy, right? Like, I mean, if you go back to the founding of the company, that was his big thing. So, yeah, it, it, I thought that that was fascinating that they were saying, yeah, we actually don't need any breakthroughs at all. Um, yeah. but, but kind of like, obviously, we're always looking to improve these things. So... Yeah, in a few years, it's likely that you'd see some improvements, you know, but don't necessarily need them. Yeah, I, I think, um, man, your uh, your contributions there are well appreciated by so many of us. I think I have like five videos I have to go make now <laughs> talking about like all the different things that he said, you know. Yeah, and I, I just – one thing that's so interesting to me is how the media is spitting this as like Elon's off the rails, like YouTube device <laughs> all, you know? And then that same story by that same article is also referencing all this new stuff we learned on the call yeah. about – you know, Tesla shares new details on autonomy. Tesla shares details on, you know, uh, Model Y on the semi. Yeah, right. So it's like so ironic to me where it's where it's like literally they're getting hits and clicks and articles – 
um, out of all of this news that came from my line of questioning and, and you know, the retail investor community yeah. and yet giving us none of the credit, still saying the conference call was a disaster when in reality it was a massive success. Yeah. And I think oh. sort of like, I, I think it changes the paradigm for like having, you know, influencers and internet people, um, be able to have a voice if they really can have better quality questions. No, man, I, I completely agree. In fact, there was a tweet from Tom Randall about it, how um, he posted the exchange where Elon cut um, the one analyst off and then uh, said, we'll go to YouTube and how in after hours trading, um, Tesla stock went down by by 4% or something like that. And uh, he and he responded to my question, so he verified this, that, that he's essentially saying, yes, there is a direct causal relationship between the stock going down and Elon cutting this analyst off. And to me, first off, I love Elon for that um, <laughs> because he kind of says, like, I don't I don't care. You know, I don't give a shit what you guys think. Like, we're going to talk about stuff that's interesting. Um, and, and, and then the second thing is, like, I'm thinking either these analysts are just crybabies and that's why that's why that happened. Or yeah. they're afraid for their jobs because. Elon, you know, can do whatever the hell he wants, especially, you know, so he doesn't have to take anyone's questions if he doesn't want to. And the ones he does want to take aren't theirs. So I feel like like this was such a great moment. Um, and, and you have done something that for all of us will benefit in the, you know, kind of the influencer creator space, because. Yeah, typically these things are the most boring, dry, lame. Like I usually just kind of read the tea leaves or I'll, I'll actually read the kind of letter they, they give out. And if there's any news about what they said on the call, like a lot of times I don't listen to it because it's like, I don't know, it's like watching paint dry. This had to be the best one. And and it's, it's you know, it's thanks to you and everyone that supported you, man. So congrats. I, I think it's it's such, it's like a turning point almost. Yeah, thank you so much. And I mean, even more so than like Elon retweeting it and stuff, like the fact that I saw MKBHD, who's someone that I look up to so much, tweet about it and how it was an awesome moment for creators. Uh, exactly. Like, I don't know. It's just, it, it's unreal to me because those are like, e Elon and him are two people that are like my heroes. So to see them like get involved with HyperChange and be yeah. supportive has been amazing. He's, he's not too far from me either. I think he's over in New Jersey. So, right? Pretty, pretty close by. You're gonna ride in his Tesla, like. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. You should. Um, what's it? What Apollo? I think is its name. Um, yeah, and you. You know, what you should do. You should try to hit up Casey and go down to three six eight. I don't know how far you are from that, but I'm sure you've been following that whole I thing. Walk by it probably once a week, honestly. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's so cool, man. Well, hey, um, thanks for taking the time here. Congratulations on this. Thank you for uh, this because, yeah, like like you were saying, I think it opens up the doors for a lot of us other creators. And um, I hope you just remember us, you know, when you're out on, uh, when you got your own talk show or something like that. Uh, yeah, thanks so much for having me, Ben. Uh, huge fan of Teslanomics, so keep up the great work. Will do, man. And uh, enjoy enjoy the time here. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a fun little ride for, for a bit. Definitely. All right, cool, man.